I have one more video here related to the streaming database concept, and then I promise I won't be talking about this particular concept again for a long time. So this particular video is on messages as a model, and I'm utilizing my Swarm Queen optimization uh, for this, and then so Swarm Queen optimization that's uh, open source in another repository. This also links to another repository of mine, which I'll show you in a second. But so let's dive into this messages as a model concept. Messages as a model is a paradigm where messages are treated as structured AI-driven data models rather than simple transactional payloads. Unlike traditional event-driven architectures where messages act as a passive data carriers, our model actively embeds intelligence, decision-making, and optimization into the messaging layer itself. This approach enables dynamic prioritization, self-organizing workflows, and adaptive execution transforming messages into active computational entities that guide and shape system behavior. The key principles of messages as models. One, messages carry actual intelligence. Instead of just containing static data, messages encapsulate context-aware structured models. Each message has embedded metadata, such as urgency, complexity, dependencies, and expected execution outcomes. AI-driven decision layer, the Swarm Queen optimization. A central AI model, the Swarm Queen in this instance, continuously evaluates messages. The Swarm Queen dis dynamically prioritizes, routes, and transforms messages based on learned patterns and objectives. Three, execution-aware message processing. Messages are not passively consumed, but actively interact with the execution layers. Adaptive prioritization mechanisms allow messages to be scheduled dynamically rather than being processed in a strict queue. Four, real-time queryability and event storage. Messages are stored and indexed as structured models. And in this instance, I'm utilizing DuckDB and they can be queried, aggregated, and analyzed as live entities instead of being ephemeral transactions. Self-optimizing workflows. Messages can trigger reactions, dependencies, and adjustments in execution pipelines. The system learns optimal routing and execution by continuously analyzing how messages impact the workflow. How this differs from traditional models. With your traditional models, the message role is a passive data packet. That's all it is, it's just information. We provide the message as an active structured model. The processing model is first in, first out, so it's just in batches, whereas our system allows for AI prioritization and dynamic scheduling. For decision making, it's all external business logic, right? All external rules, whereas in our system, the system can learn, adapt, and change processes and decision making on the fly. Queryability, the major problem is, is that uh, API calls are not natively queried, right? Uh, and then these messages are not natively queryable. So this allows for indexed queryable event storage. Big feature there. Execution strategy, for uh, traditional API calls, it's predefined consumer logic, whereas this allows for uh, the first adaptive self-optimizing workflow within an API flow. So example use case would be, let's say supply and demand optimization. Imagine a real-time supply chain management system. The traditional approach would be messages are order placed, like order placed or inventory updated are sent to a queue and then they're processed in the order that they're received. That's you know simple process, message in, message out, process. Whereas our system, the Swarm Queen AI, continuously reprioritizes messages based on market demand, available supply, and execution cost. It's taking a look at all of the real-time dynamics of your business. Is this product actually in inventory? Things like that. Uh, and then it's essentially making real-time decisions on the fly and adapting and adjusting on the fly. So messages with higher supply chain impact are processed first. Low priority messages can be delayed or auto-adjusted in real time. So essentially, like the bottom line overall of this is that the uh, model acts again as a uh, swarm driven optimization for messages and message routing. And so here's the full GitHub repository here. It's a message as a model, so swarm queen optimization, all open source licensed. And then you go here um, into the code. Here's all of the code for the model. It's uh, very straightforward as far as the model. Again, it's uh, heavily built on top of uh, DuckDB. And then so it's it's um, utilizing DuckDB for a lot of the, the processing. And then it's uh, my swarm optimization on top of that, right? So it's like it's DuckDB plus my swarm optimization, fusing them together. That's kind of what we have here. One other thing that I want to show you within this video though, and point out is let me go to my repositories.
And sorry, I have a lot and I need to remember the name of it. <laughs> so let me find it. There it is, Liquid API. So Liquid API is an intelligent API and integration framework that combines the power of language models with swarm algorithms to enable seamless communication between incompatible applications. It's designed to solve complex business integration scenarios where traditional API approaches fall short. This incorporates the LLM model in the mix. So LLM powered decision making, intelligent routing and data transformation using small, efficient language models, flexible adapter system, easy to implement adapters for any API endpoint, async processing built on modern async await patterns for optimal performance. Kind of the bottom line of how this works is uh, this is exactly what I just kind of went over um, with the messages as a model, but this is built out uh, and, and like uh, instead of the swarm queen optimization. Uh, so it does use swarm algorithms in this instance as well, but the, the LLM model is the swarm queen. <laughs> this is like my uh, first evolution of, of that mo model right? and that concept. Like you don't just uh, come up with like concept like that on the fly, just flat out, right? Like it's, I've iterated on this, like uh, liquid API is like the, the, like the third generation and then uh, swarm queen optimization is like the fourth generation, right? So I've gone through like over the last like two years on this multiple uh, iterations of, of this product, right? Like uh, I can show you, like um, let me go back to my repositories here. I, I remember the name of the previous one, which was Mobile Swarm Agents. <laughs> this one, right? So, yeah. And then this one was June 2024, and then that one was in November, right? So I made Mobile Swarm Agents in June. I thought about it, and like it, it percolated for six months, <laughs> and then I built it out and I improved it uh, in November with uh, the like a Liquid API, uh, and then now in uh, end of March, coming into February, then a company comes up to me like what four months later, uh, and then they uh, have uh, this situation that involves evolving this again. <laughs> And then so that that's generation four. So that gives you kind of like an idea on the back end as to how I evolve these things and build them out, right? I build out like lots of these different projects, and then sometimes they they sit and they they um, uh, sit for months, and then I pick them up again, and then I, I put them back down. I, I and that's my favorite honest way to to deal with AI. Like I'm not to me, I'm not interested in one a particular aspect of AI overall. What interest me overall about AI is how it works. That was my very first question. When I dove into AI, I flat out didn't understand how it worked. And as an engineer, that bothered the heck out of me. Like not being able to explain how an AI model works was was devastating to me. <laughs> and then so uh, here I am, right? I, I, if I am faced with a problem like that, my solution to that is let's rectify the problem. And then so I, I put in the work to uh, rectify the problem until I understood literally every single aspect of AI. And then to me, understanding it is being able to take it apart and put it back together better than you took it apart from an engineer's perspective. Right? Um, and then so from there, now you have uh, now two years of this content uh, and uh, these videos and like what, uh, 600 examples now, all with uh, every single one with code. Um, it shows these things, right? Uh, I don't know, like the like a lot, like the number one criticism that people try to make is like, uh, like uh, something is AI generated or a piece of your code is AI generated or something. And then, so that means that you don't understand uh, something. And like uh, to those people, that means that they don't understand AI overall, right? They're in the position that I was three years ago. Uh, and then, so I, I rectified that. Uh, I didn't just get mad at people <laughs> over it. I rectified it myself. I, I, I pulled myself up uh, and, and did it, right? I, I gained my knowledge. Uh, I didn't gain the knowledge by like just putting someone down that didn't put any knowledge into my head, right? Uh, so I don't really understand that mentality overall. But so if you like this set of content, please like, subscribe. Thank you very much.